I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. The writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on. And it, huh? What? The prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? Uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes. Come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? Jonathan Majors, I'm disappointed in you. I'm not canceling you, my brother. But don't you ever get on another magazine with no pink jacket and no damn leggings. They got you looking like you naked. Don't do that, brother. Don't let them effeminize you. You are an alpha male, Jonathan Majors. You are on the cover of Ebony magazine. They got you looking very effeminate in that woman's outfit. Those stiletto boots. Don't do that no more, brother. Jonathan Majors, they want to compromise your masculinity, brother, because you are a strong masculine man. Don't let them compromise your masculinity. Black men, we have to stop letting the power structure compromise our masculinity. We have to stop letting the power structure compromise our masculinity. And we have to also stop letting the power structure define our masculinity. Not only do they compromise black masculinity, they define black masculinity. What do I mean? They have defined black masculinity as being a good athlete. A good entertainer, a good military man, or a repeat offender. Also, sexual bedroom prowess. They have locked black men into a definition of masculinity. They have locked black men into a definition of masculinity. That promotes reckless sexuality. These are the five archetypes of black masculinity created by the white power structure. Reckless sexuality. If you're recklessly sexual, you are masculine. Slave plantation images of black masculinity. 
slave plantation images of black masculinity. Sexual recklessness. Sexual recklessness. Military sacrifice. If you go to the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and you sacrifice your life, that's an archetype of black masculinity. Good football player, good basketball player, good baseball player, good MMA fight. In other words, if you're able to get your strength, your physical power exploited by white corporate America, that's a form of black masculinity. Look at that. To be exploited athletically is a form of black masculinity. Look at the contradiction. To be exploited athletically is a form of black masculinity. Look at the contradiction. With all the roles you ever did, man, what role do you regret doing the most? Where you like, man, I wish I never did that shit. Well, I'm not saying I regret doing three strikes because it wasn't really too much in there other than my ass being in the sling in the air and a, with a diaper on. That's like, you can't never take that back. But um, like I said, it's acting, I'm working, I'm getting compensated for what I do and I'm a professional. So if it's any part, I wouldn't say movie, but a part in the movie would be lockdown where the character, my character got raped. Um, I didn't want to do that scene, but it was already written in the script. I already had the part. So the director, Mr. John Lutz and Hop, shout out, you know, I was like, man, I don't see the relevance of not getting the character getting raped because people get raped all the time in prison. Not today like they did back in the 80s or the 70s, but unfortunately that it happened and um not to me thank god never and um but i think the character had to get a dude fellatio head or something he, he gotta act like it so that's i cried after doing that scene i hated that i told the director man you know i don't see the relevance of this happening because a, a real mother i'd have bit the dude shit off excuse my language but in reality, I'm not finna just let me put anything on my mouth. You're not getting it back. Come on, man. Who would? Who would? Who would? You got to kill. Some, you have to murder me, man. I hated that. I would take that back. Damn, man. I hate to hear that, man. How was you feeling when you had to act that out? Well, the, the, the actor, in actuality, I'm on the bed. And the actor is way over here. But from the camera angle, it looked like I'm we're right, I'm right in front of him. So all I'm doing is this. Going doing this. And he's making facial uh moans and, uh, and all that, man. And so it was like I never it never it wasn't real. It was acting, but I could see like from people watching it, it looked it real, it looked real. And it was, it was, I hate that. I hate that, man. I can't take it back. And you said you cried, yo? Yeah. I, um, at the film in the scene, one shot, skew. One take, because I told him I'm not going to do this over and over and over. I walked off the set, went somewhere secluded, and I cried, bro. Cause I felt like I just had a uh, did something that wasn't necessary. You know what I mean? It wasn't me. It wasn't in my spirit. My spirit was uncomfortable. And if I could go back, I wouldn't do it.